Hello and welcome to this Silent Hunter 5 tutorial. I will show you how to use the range and angle on bow finder, or in short RAOBF, and the attack disc to gather data on your target and to set up a 90 degree intercept course. Uh, let us get started by going to our attack periscope station. We will raise the scope up. And we know that there is a ship roughly in this direction somewhere. There we go. This is the ship that we want to sink. So, um, the first step is always to correctly identify the ship, because there is some data that we need from the recognition manual. Let's bring that up. I know this is a tanker, and I usually start by looking at the smokestack. So I can see in this instance the smokestack is way in the back. There's only one. Uh, next I look at the masts. There's one, two big masts and a smaller one that looks to be on the bridge of the ship. I will start to turn my, my boat towards zwei, the ship. Um, I will explain why in a moment. Furthermore, I can see that this ship has uh, a split superstructure. So there is the bridge here in the front. And there is also a superstructure in the back where the smokestack is. So if I look at the recognition manual, it's obviously not this one. It isn't this one either. Not this one, not that one. No. This looks promising. So if we compare this, we can see smokestack in the back, two large masts, a little mast on top of the bridge. And yeah, this is our target, a Samarin class tanker for 7,600 tons. What we need is uh, the ship's draft to set up our torpedo depth. We need the ship's length and we need the ship's mast height. This is the data that we will use. First of all, I always like to start by measuring the target speed. How do you do that? Well. One method is to open up the stopwatch and right click on it. This opens up the Ujagd clock, where you can basically um, read off the ship's speed in relation to the time it needs to pass through the center of your periscope. We can also use the IOBF to get the target speed. I will show you how that works in a moment. For both methods to work, it is very important that your submarine is either completely still in the water, which by the way is highly unrealistic because a ship at sea is never completely still in the water, it will always be moved by the waves. And the other option to do this is to center your periscope perfectly on the front of your ship. That way there will be no lateral movement relative to this ship. How do you center your periscope? I usually set the speed to zero. I turn my periscope until both uh, dials here are in the zero position. It can be a bit tricky. There we go. So now all I have to do is to turn my ship so that my scope is just in front of the tanker. Let us speed this up a little bit. Neuer Kurs, 2, 5, 6 Grad. Come on. We're turning a bit fast now. Let me speed up time just a little bit to make things go faster. There we go. Closer. Just want to center it. Okay, there we go. Um, I'll just slow down. And I will want to close Fahrt because we're getting kind of close. Neuer Kurs, zwei, fünf, fünf. Also turn a little bit more. Let me 
just verify that the rudder is completely at zero. Yeah, all right. So now we just have to wait for the ship's bow to arrive on this vertical line. Let's do that. Message interrupting us. Okay. There we go. I will start the stopwatch once the ship's bow arrives at this point. And there we go. I will stop it once the ship's stern passes through this vertical line. If we then compare the ship's length to the scales on this little clock here, we can see there are multiple, multiple of those. There's a 100 meter scale, a 150 meter scale and a 200 meter scale. Also a little 75 meter scale. We will of course look at the 200 meter scale because that is closest to our ship's length. Just a little bit more. Okay, any second now and... There we go. So this is what, 45 seconds? Alright. Looking at the 200 meter scale, we would be led to believe that the ship is traveling close to 9 knots. This is actually incorrect, because the ship has a length of 190.6 meters, not 200. Um, so the ship's speed would actually be closer to 8 knots. Let us bring up the RAOBF. And I will show you how we can uh, calculate the target speed. Or basically there's no real calculation involved by us, it's just that um, the disk will show us the target speed once we set it up. I will first take a moment to explain what we are looking at right now. So this is the range, the range and angle on Bowfinder, excuse me. Um, it has multiple rings, as you can see. There's the outer ring, which reads basis in meter. So this is basically your base in meters, um, basically the real length of the thing you are looking at. For example, for this ship, if we later look at the length of the ship, we would be looking here for 190 meters. Then there is the next ring, which can be rotated. Um, it has two scales on it, an outer scale, which reads Entfernung in 100 meter. So this is your distance in 100 meters. For example, the number 40 would be 4,000 meters, so 4 kilometers right here. Then the inner scale is showing us the optical length. The optical length refers to these marks on your periscope. So for example, if something has the optical length of 10, we would be looking at the number 10 on this scale. And then the most inner ring that cannot be moved is the angle on bow. Seal course winkle as it says here. So how do we get the target speed? Well, we know two things. We know that the ship is 190.6 meters long. 190.6 meters on the outer scale would be right about here. And we know that the ship took 45 seconds 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. 45 seconds to pass through the center of our periscope. We can use the scale for the distance in order to gather, uh, to basically read off the target speed. We move the number 45 to the number 190 on the outer scale. And now we can read our target speed off at this red line here. So it would be 8 knots, basically. 8.2 knots. 8 knots is perfectly fine. So now that we know the target speed, what else can we do with the RAOBF? Well, we can find the range to target. Most people do that by using the study meter. Let us, let us try that for a second here. So let's send the mast height to the TDC. We set up the periscope. Uh, there we go, mass top approximately there. So, 
let me just drag this away. We have a range of 3,104 meters. Well, I think we can be a bit more precise than that by using this. How do we do that? We ideally you want to measure the target's optical length of the mast, the target's optical length of the ship, and you want to note down your bearing all at the same time. That would be, well, perfect. Um, it's a bit much to do, but we'll try. Okay, we can see the target's mast has an optical height of one, two, three, four, approximately four, because we need to subtract a little sliver here. But we also have to uh, bear in mind that we do not see the ship's true waterline because the ship is a little bit behind the horizon or because of waves you will uh, basically only see the ship's true waterline when it is very close. You can basically uh, compare the ship's hull and features like these. I don't know, is that for ventilation? Are those windows? I have no idea. But you can compare it to the picture of the ship. And if you do that, you will see that, well, it's almost there, but not quite. So the waterline is actually invisible. We need to um, add it in our minds to the calculation. So we measure the ship's mast height. One, two, three, four point two approximately. We subtract a little bit from here because... Um, yeah, I cannot bring the periscope to the perfect position, so that would be uh, about 4. And then we add our waterline that we actually cannot see, which would be, again, something like 4.1 maybe. So we look at the optical length of 4.1. There we go. Here is 4, 4.1.2. Well, let's, let's use something in between. You bring your optical length up to this red line here. Now you have a look at the ship's mast height, 29.9 meters. And we look on our outer scale, where the real length is noted, uh, about here. So almost 30 meters, very close to it actually. And you read the distance to the target from the scale next to it. So that would be 25, 26, 27, 28.5, 28.6 or 0.7. So this would be 2,870 um, meters, approximately. So let, let's just call it 2,850. As we can see, that differs from our study meter reading, because we are able to be more precise than the study meter by looking at the ship and we are not confused by the double image especially in low light conditions the double image from the study meter can really uh, impact your accuracy so what did we say two thousand six seven eight hundred and fifty let us just type that in the ships uh, the distance to the ship is only well, a prerequisite for our next calculations. We later will not need the ship's distance anymore because we will be on a 90 degree intercept course. Uh, next we need to measure the ship's optical length. So we measure from here to there where the stern is. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven point two because well, let's say 7.5, because I'm not perfectly on the bow here. So 7.5 it is. We will now take our range measurement that we took here and simply drag it up to the ship's length, 190. There we go. Right there we did measure an optical length of 7.5 so we look at the optical length scale and we see 7.5 is right there and this gives us an AOB 
of 15, 16, 16 points, 16.3 or 0.2. So this is how we find the angle and bow. Let's set this up all right. Yeah. I'm pausing the game from time to time just to allow myself the time to explain things here. 16. Now, we already have the range to target. We have the target speed at 8 knots. And we have the angle on bow. We could actually go ahead and fire right now and we would probably hit. But um, there's always a little bit of imprecision involved in this, so you do not want to risk missing a shot at such an angle like this one. Also, your torpedo could simply bounce off at such an angle. We want to set up a 90 degree intercept course. To do that, we use the attack disk. The attack disk is amazing, once you figure out how it works. It has a few movable parts. This one represents your own boat. This one is a bearing pointer, and this one represents um, the target. What we want to do now is flip this little switch. It will orient the attack disk so that our course is at the top here. Now we will take our bearing to target, which was 2, and we will point the bearing pointer at 2 degrees on the most outer ring. Um, this can be a bit fiddly because uh, as you can see the bearing pointer does not reach the most outer ring so what I like to do to help me a little bit with that is I use this pointer. I point it at 2 degrees and then I move the other pointer by dragging it right here until it overlaps. Uh, there we go. Now I can move this away. So this is pointing at 2 degrees on the most outer ring. We have just figured out that the angle on bow is 16 degrees. We will now take this here, the pointer representing our target ship, and rotate it uh, until 16 degrees on this ring is at our bearing pointer. All right, about here. Now we know that our target is traveling at a course of 62 degrees. We read the course from this ring here. So our target is on a course of 62 degrees. I will now use this little pointer and simply put it in a 90 degree, degree um, AOB position here. And I can read on the outer scale here on this one that I need to be on a course of 328 degrees for a 90 degree intercept. Easy as that. Let's do that. So, once again, two, uh, 328. 328. Neuer Kurs, 3, 2, 8, Grad. So we will now be turning in. I can use this time to set up my torpedoes. What you want to do is, um, let me just get the speed to zero really quick. You want to center your periscope at the zero position. It can be a bit fiddly as I said. Sometimes a bit, sometimes a real pain in the ass to be honest. I almost had it. That, oh. Wow, this is taking really long right now. I'm sorry guys. This is a bit ridiculous. The game really wants to make this difficult for me right now. Okay. There, oh god damn it. Doesn't matter. We don't have to be that precise. So, manual input on. We know that when our target passes through my periscope center, it will be on an AOB of 90 degrees starboard. So we can set that up. 
we also know that the target will be at a speed of 8 knots. So we set that up too. That's it. Now, I know that my torpedo, in order to hit the target that will be directly in front of my submarine, needs to go in a straight line. So I will now turn my periscope until again the gyro angle dials are in the zero position. Oh, I don't know what's wrong right now. Usually this goes without a problem, but of course because this is a recording the game likes to mess it up. But okay, here we go. We established that our target ship has a draft of 10.5 meters. So I will set up tube 1 and tube 3 to be at a depth of... Let, let's put one at 8 meters, use a magnetic Magnet pistol. Ein. Magnet ein. Tube 3 will be at 10 meters with a magnetic pistol. Magnet ein. Magnet Both torpedoes ein. will be running fast. Rohr Flood eins. the tubes. Wird bewässert. Rohr drei. Wird bewässert. And in fact, let's, let's fire a Umschalten salvo. Auf salve. Umschalten auf salve. Tube 1 and 3. So many people are not sure how to set up a salvo shot because um, they don't know how many degrees to put in here. Basically, I'll show you once we um, finish turning and once our target gets a little bit closer. I will speed up time until we finish the turn. already very close to us but there we go so if I look here and I look on this dial I can see that the dial is right now at the uh, 5 degree position right now at 6 degrees right here it will be 7 I compare the ship's, uh, ship's length to the degrees if I do this so basically from 7 to 7 again so the ship's length covers 10 degrees on the gyro angle so I will set this up to let's put it on 8.5 both tubes are open we are ready to fire the ship just needs to get to here and we need to stop turning already We are still in our turn. But, well, a little bit of imprecision doesn't really matter that much at such a short range. I'm pretty sure that we will hit our target. The advantage of using the IOBF and the attack disk compared to um, the traditional plotting on the map is that you can obtain your target data pretty damn fast and also set up your attack course really fast. It really helps if you um, sail at night and your ship crew reports a target and it's already pretty close or in bad weather or whatever. Right now we are just waiting until the ship's center arrives at the center of our periscope because the torpedoes will go left and right. About... Let's have a look. So one should hit right here and the other right here. I think our target is speeding up and has discovered the torpedoes. Interesting. Torpedo treffer. Torpedo treffer. There we go. I was starting to worry a little bit. But, yeah, some little imprecision can offset your um, 
the point where you will hit by a few meters. It is not that tragic. Um, so I hope you now know how to use the IOBF and the attack disc. If you have any more questions, don't be afraid to ask them. I will try to answer as best I can. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the mod. And good hunting. Goodbye.